Ah, this can't be fixed. Worthless junk. Oh well. Time for some mistake here with a video on the internals and modifications that you could do to the Busby Panther pistol. Of course, that is the new little single shot that you can get as a two for five or at Dollar General or other people have been telling me that you can get them at, I believe it was either Meyer or Target, in a four pack for ten dollars. Well again, that's two dollars and fifty cents per blaster no matter where you're buying it. Fantastic little pistol, outperforms a jolt, very pocketable, and in a nice little twist, it's both extremely hard to mod and very easy to mod. And I'll show you what I mean. This little pistol here. Find the screw holes. Look anywhere. Do you see screw holes anywhere on this pistol? You don't. Because this entire shell is two halves that are solvent welded together. And it is the most difficult part about it will be taking that solvent weld apart. Now what I did was I sat down with my grimy shop rag here that I use when I'm modding. I layered it up, put the shell down like this, and I worked a very sharp brand new blade in my razor knife here, my utility knife. I worked it while resting it, because I have to do this one handed. I worked it down the shell, gently pushing in, Worked it all the way around, and then, of course you have to avoid the front cap. That is a separate piece. Worked all the way around, all the way around, and then I took these two little flathead screwdrivers. They're very wide tipped, as far as width this way, so they won't stress the shell out. And I just went in, pushed one in, and again I, I still have to do this all one handed because while well, I arms on the mend but I pushed one in and then I take and it would keep the shell spread and then I'd work the other one along until I finally got the rest of the solvent weld to snap free that is the one and only difficult part that you will find when modifying or trying to get into the panther once you get into it what you find is a very very typical plunger tube assembly with a t-bar rear prime sitting in the shell like this now I'm gonna get real close here this is what you see you have an integrated barrel and plunger tube the plunger rod with the plunger head on and a very very simple catch mechanism all it is is as you pull the trigger it pulls the catch down and there's a notch on the plunger rod here I'll take this apart. There's a little notch on the plunger rod right there that lines up to the back of that catch and it sits like this. When you pull it back far enough it'll sit like this. Now that's all you have to do and that'll catch. You pull the trigger it pulls the catch down and the plunger rod slams forward and compresses air and propels the dart. Another good thing Yes, you are seeing a screw inside of there. And just something to note, you probably won't have to do anything to that, uh, that O-ring. That has a very nice seal to it. But yeah, you'll be able to pop that off with a screwdriver. And it looks like you're going to be able to nest a stock Busby or Nerf Retaliator spring. Because Busby, Busby springs for most springers are replicas of retaliator springs and what I went and did off camera was I took a Busby I believe this was spring out of a night attack or tactical storm one of the other the same spring so it doesn't really matter I cut it and I went ahead and squared it that is this right here snipped in half I cut it a little bit longer because that is a smaller diameter spring this is one of the actual few unique Busby springs and I'm just going to unscrew that, nest this over, put it together, and I will drill out the, uh, I'm going to drill out the, the barrel here, get rid of the air restrictor, I'll take care of all of that, 
off screen and I actually went ahead and cut and flared out nice little piece of brass yeah this brass has got a little, little bit of grime on the outside but it's clean on the inside and I've already got it flared out like trumpet style to where I will be able to seat this in there and I'll have myself a double sprung brass Busby Panther to be my personal backup pistol. That's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So I will come back to you after I get some of this stuff done off camera. Okay, coming back to the finished product. Yes, I, I did completely go ahead and finish it. I have a brass barrel that only protrudes out about a quarter of an inch. Again, it's just, I just did that for a good air seal. And in the end, I didn't do the nested uh, spring design. You see over here, I've got some test samples where I tried nesting different lengths. And this is the stock spring. And what I ended up doing was I went with a seven kilogram spring that I cut out to be around uh, about three quarter of an inch to an inch longer. Basically, it's where the stock spring has room to kind of play on the plunger rod. I have it to where the seven kilogram spring is slightly compressed already before it's primed and now I haven't went ahead and sealed this back up because what you're gonna have to do is either two options you can either a take um, the metal pipe clamps and if you don't know what those are there they have little slots in them and a little flathead uh, flathead bolt and you tighten them down with a screwdriver you could go around like twice if you want like a really industrialized look like you could I say you could spray paint this thing like a off gray and put those on it and make it look like it's a real industrial kind of scrap together pistol. Be neat, but it would take away from the the reason I'm going to use this to be able to slip it in your pocket. So I quite simply am going to either super glue or epoxy this back together. And so far I've been testing it right now. It's not glued or anything. I've just been priming it by holding and priming back. Well, and if I do it carefully, I can still do it even with my uh, injured arm. But I have been hitting anywhere from 85 to uh, 93.2 was my last shot. Make sure you can see that. This is what I've been getting in a range of mid 80s to lower 90s, which is more than fully acceptable for me. As you can see, I did 13 test shots. That's all I've done before I uh, basically started to feel sore in my arm and I'm going to put this down I'll I'll glue this up let it sit for the night but I am very very pleased with that result if I can get 80s to lower 90s out of a two dollar and fifty cent pistol that I threw a seven kilogram spring again cut down to about three quarter of an inch to an inch longer after I squared it it was less than an inch that's why I'm saying about three quarter probably because I do re-square my my springs if I cut them down which, if you don't know what re-squaring is, is that's a squared spring right there. It don't leave a jagged, like if you were to cut it, don't install a spring like this with that jagged edge sticking out. File it down a little bit and then take pliers and bend it flat to where it looks more like this. You don't have to do a perfect job, but do not leave it sticking up like this because that'll just dig into the plastic. Like say if you were to put this into the plunger head, it will actually dig a hole into it and weaken it. And if you put it under the reverse side, into the shell, where the spring stop is, it'll dig into the spring stop and weaken it, and eventually you're going to hear a pop and a crack, and then a failure. But I'm actually going to save that spring because that's a, a, as of now, a very unique spring. And never know when I could use that again. But yeah, I'm going to epoxy this up, and I will uh, fire off a few more shots and let you guys see for yourself. Um, I'm just going to do it here on the bench and I'll lift up my chronograph so you can see it. That's the easiest way because I've got it mounted in my overhead mount right now. Gotten all fancy on the channel with the overhead mount and everything. Actually, if you've seen how I'm doing an overhead mount, you'd laugh and say <laughs> it's, it's smart, but it's really janky. But here we go. Uh, replica. I'm not even going to pick it up. It's 93.2. Let's go again. Now, no promises on how many of these I'll do. My arm had already started to get fairly sore, so I'm just going to go with what I can. 
And no, I don't feed the Precise Pros all the way in. I got it. Here's another one, 85.2. And again, if this hits 80s to 90s, I am more than pleased with that result out of such a small pistol. <laughs> I didn't need I hit the chronograph. So it reads 48.3, but that was all on me. But actually, I'm going to stop there and we'll call it on that. But I have now a 80 mid 80s blaster out of this and I'm quite happy with the result. This is Mongoose Jake with my mod of the Busby Panther. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.